Hello guys and welcome back to yet another AMC video. Today, I'd want to discuss how Adam Aaron finally addressed unlawful shorting and FUD, demonstrating that he is not on our side. In addition, I would like to discuss the present situation at the SEC and how Gary Gensler may be removed from his position to improve market regulation. Therefore, remain tuned and let's earn some cash. And now I will present the most important facts. Thus, Adam Aaron tweeted, Twitter is an enormously effective communications tool, but unfortunately it can also be a sewer of slander. He stated that I had received so much acclaim, not all of which was deserved, as well as poisonous lies. He said my opinion is that we should ignore the hatred and do what is right. And he added by saying, it continues to amaze and perplex me that certain individuals believe I am not on the side of retail investors, he said. I'll say it over and over. He stated, I hold or have a financial stake in millions of AMC shares and AP units. As a retail shareholder, I am naturally on your side. Therefore, for all those skeptics who assert that Adam Aaron is not on our side, I am simply selling my own shares to get wealthy and assist those hedge funds. In fact, Adam Aaron is doing everything possible to assist us, the retail investors, and to enhance AMC as a firm, so extending or prolonging its existence, he explained. It may boil down to the fact that many of you are frustrated and insisting that we address market pressures that you believe are unjust, he added. We always consider what steps would be prudent and credible. Now this is the most essential aspect, since Ken Griffin has not actually phoned Adam Aaron and said, Adam Aaron. I affirm unequivocally that I am illegally shorting your stock, as Adam Aaron has not yet received confirmation from Ken Griffin. He cannot simply emit synthetic shorting in public. Clearly, this is slander, and both Adam Aaron and AMC could end up in court and be forced to pay hefty fines. Consider what transpired with Elon Musk and Tesla's 420 announcement. Over the past two years, Elon Musk has been litigating his funding secured at 42020 which many have called market manipulation. If Adam Aaron begins to disseminate material that is not necessarily 100% genuine, it is possible that Adam Aaron and AMC are manipulating the market. Therefore, Adam Aaron is concentrating on the good ideas, which are to increase our cash reserves and drive AMC forward with intelligence. Additionally, he tweeted that I accidentally tweeted him yesterday. Many of you believed my denial was less than forthright and that the EGM must have some significance. No, he said, that was merely a tweeting error. Today, though, I am tweeting this, and it does have significance. The capital letter Y. Now I'm uncertain if by why he means why this synthetic shorting is occurring. I do not know whether it refers to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or any other day of the week. I honestly have no idea what the letter Y stands for. Clearly, Adam Aaron is tweeting this today and it does have significance. I simply do not yet know what the letter I stands for. Some speculate that the outcome of the forthcoming AMC vote will be yes. Some have hypothesized that the I represents a road bifurcation. Obviously, there are other additional possibilities occurring at this time. I have no idea what I stands for, but I do know that this is a beautiful tweet with a brilliant point. Profitably tweeting that so many people who once claimed to be an ape are now clicking together with shorts and paper-handed bears, makes me so happy since everything we discussed at the outset has occurred. Many of folks who tweet that Adam Aaron is against us are currently participating in and hosting space calls with well-known short sellers and FUD propagators. The fact that presumed past apes who are now claiming that Adam Aaron is not on our side are sticking together with proven short sellers says a lot, I believe. Oh. And if you haven't already, join me on Moomoo, the sponsor of today's video, by clicking the link in the description. Currently, you can receive up to 15 free stocks. Commission free trade free level to market data and Moomoo is actually quite easy to use and has a very basic UI and loads of technical indicators and advanced trading tools. In addition, he tweeted that Adam Aaron had spoken everything he had to say. And to maximize shareholder value, we should vote yes just as we should have in 2021, he said. Literally, the only thing we have not done in the past three years is listen to our own CEO, since everyone had their own goal or agenda to advance. First, 
we have the same vote count for technology. We maintained multiple share accounts. In addition to databases of investors with individual share counts, we got a plethora of additional proposals, such as investigating synthetic shorts. But now Adam Aaron is leading the way in his attempt to battle the shorts. In the past three years, Adam Aaron has proposed a variety of ideas, many of which we have voted against. Therefore, I will vote affirmatively this time. I reiterate that I am not expressly urging you to vote, yes or no. I'm only providing you with information and letting you decide how to vote. Now, with regard to Gary Gensler, Bill, a member of Congress, is cited as saying that the House GOP will hold him accountable because Gary Gensler refuses to adhere to his own rules and meet with them. He stated today, as promised, our inspection of the SEC begins with a request for information involving their interactions with Sam Bankman-Fried and FDA officer and the Justice Department. So the House Committee on Financial Services is asking a lot of various papers from the SEC and specifically from Gary Gensler relating to their involvement with FTX. The House Committee on Financial Services is extremely suspicious of the SEC and Gary Gensler, believing that they are aiding Sam Bankman-Fried and FTX in obtaining a regulatory monopoly. They definitely anticipate some sort of foul play, but whether it involves that SEC as a whole or Gary Gensler individually is unknown. However, they have sought copious amounts of data. They have requested this information by February 24, 2023, at 5 o'clock p.m., so they may conduct a thorough investigation. Even though this is not directly related to synthetic shorting, Gary Gensler's expulsion from the SEC is a distinct possibility. And obviously, the removal of Gary Gensler would result in the appointment of a new SEC commissioner who could perhaps do a better job of market regulation. And in terms of market regulation, I'm certain that the top goal would be to control the stock market as a whole and make it fairer by eliminating illicit synthetic shorting. Now, Martin has tweeted that the AMC Threshold Securities list has been active for seven trading days. He stated that it is embarrassing for the SEC because it is evident that market makers are misusing their exemption from the bona fide market making requirement. Crashes is once more prominent. Right. As of February 2023, Morgan Stanley expects the S&P 500 to experience significant falls. This is Mike Wilson, who repeated on February 6 that the S&P 500 has not yet reached its bottom. He anticipates another 19-20% to decline for the S&P 500 before the market meltdown is over. And he anticipates that the S&P 500 will bottom between 3,000 and 3,300 points in the first quarter before recovering later in the year. Therefore, he is essentially predicting that the S&P 500 will reach a 25% lower bottom over the next week and the next month and a half. Clearly, a major chain of liquidations and the AMC squeeze would be triggered if the stock market crashes by 25% during the next few weeks. However, please let me know what you think in the comments section below. And as always, gentlemen, be remember to ring the notification bell so that you are notified when a new video is uploaded. Cheers!